GarageBand's file management system is a little bit crappy, but with a few quick tips, you can set yourself up to make sure that you save and back up your GarageBand projects every time. Let's go. First, an important recommendation. When you're saving a new project, I recommend instead of using on my iPad location here, that you use the iCloud drive. The reason being is it'll be automatically backed up to your iCloud drive if you start a new project in your iCloud drive folder. I also recommend creating a new folder for each project that you start. So here in iCloud drive, we're gonna go to GarageBand for iOS. Now I have a separate in progress folder. You don't have to be quite as pedantic as that. But what you can do is tap on this one, the new folder icon. It's going to create a new untitled folder. All we need to do there is go the name of our song and we've got a folder ready to go. Open that folder and then hit create song. Now the temptation is to dive in here and start creating but what I recommend you do before anything else is just open an audio recorder track, hit record, record absolutely nothing and then close the project. Why? Because then we can name this. I know, how many people have my song 1, 2, 3, 4, 73? Well, all we can do now is tap and hold on this and it'll bring up this menu here. We can just tap on rename and again, we can name the project immediately. Then all you need to do is go back into your project and start creating. You can even delete that original track if you want to. If you've watched videos here on the channel before, you'll know I'm a big fan of version control. You can see with this project, here called Crow's Whisper. We have the original project, number two and number three. The reason I use this is that we can create backups, different versions of this project. Now, it will take up a little more space, so you will need a little more room on your iCloud drive or wherever you're saving your files, and you can go ahead and delete your older ones as you progress. But let me explain now why I do this. So we'll open this one, Crow's Whisper 3, and let's pretend I come in here and I've done a bunch of mixing. I've changed a bunch of these these volume settings. I've come in here and I've added different plugins and EQs and added some effects onto here. And now I want to save a version of this project. Well, what we can do is hit the save button in the top left corner like that, and it will save. But here's the problem. It will overwrite any other changes that we've made there. What if I want to start experimenting and I don't necessarily want to make it auto save every time? Well, what we can do is tap and hold on this number three, and it'll bring up this menu. Let's hit duplicate and check this out, it creates version four. So now we know version three will be unchanged. And what we can do is tap on this one to open version four. Now we can make whatever changes we need in here. And we know that those previous versions will still be there. This is a really handy method to both, both make sure you have backups of your projects, but also to make sure that that auto save feature when you close doesn't save over some stuff that maybe you didn't want to do. And again, if you start running out of space, no problem. If you're happy that you will never need this first version, or second version, just tap and hold and get this menu again and hit the delete button. There you go, a few quick and simple tips to make sure that you never lose another GarageBand project and you remove the frustration of that autosave feature. Hope you found this one useful. If you'd like to learn more about creating, recording and releasing in GarageBand, check out the other videos down in the description.